the John Morris Show, episode 80. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey there, my name's John Morris. I'm a former U.S. Army veteran turned freelance web developer. And my goal for you at this podcast is twofold. First, I want to help you learn how to code. Second, I want to help you turn that code into a full-time living. Because if you're like me, what you want is the freedom, the satisfaction, and the income that you get from being a high-profile web developer. So if that's you, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube so you never miss an episode. You can find all my past episodes and get subscribed at johnmorrisonline.com slash John Morris show. Also, as you get value from the show, consider becoming a supporting listener on Patreon because you'll help keep the show free for everyone and you'll get access to exclusive courses, source code, and Q&A sessions available only to supporting listeners. Visit johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, to become a supporting listener. All right, let's get into this episode. Hey everybody, welcome back to the John Morris Show, johnmorrisonline.com. This episode, our tech tutorial of the week, and this one I'm going to be showing you three different ways that you can validate email addresses one using HTML, one using jQuery, and one using PHP. So if you're listening on the podcast, meaning off YouTube, iTunes, Android, etc., you may want to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash YouTube and check out my latest video there so you can actually see the source code and everything I'm doing here. Also, if you want to get access to this source code, it's available for supporting listeners of the show over on Patreon at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, along with all of the rest of the source code that I have. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and let me show you how this works. So the first one is HTML. This is kind of the new HTML5 fancy functionality that we have here. And it's really pretty simple. In order to make this work, all you have to do is set the type. Normally, you can uh, set the type to text or email or URL, whatever. Here in the input, you set it to email and it has some natural validation built into it. So this is the only part of this that really matters. And this is this top field that we have right up here. So let's say, for example, I put something like JJ just like this and I don't enter any at or anything like that. And I go ahead and I hit enter on this. You can see here it says, please include an at symbol in email address. JJ is missing an at symbol. And so it has some very, very basic validation that it's doing here to see that you actually inserted an email address, a valid email address. Now, it's not foolproof, but it will stop kind of the basic things for getting at signs and uh, dot coms and stuff like that. So it it's simple. Uh, it's basic and oftentimes it's enough for what you need in order to do some just basic validation. So again, to do it with HTML, all you need to do is set the type of the input to email type equals email. All right. The next one then is using jQuery. And as with anything inside of jQuery, there's probably a hundred different ways that you could do this. Actually in doing a little research for every tech tutorial, I always do a little bit of research and in doing the research, there's there's probably literally a hundred different things out there. There's all sorts of regex and so forth that you could get into. What I typically prefer to do is if there's some sort of jQuery plugin that I can use that does the job and it's fairly well updated and used, then I'll go ahead and use that. The plugin I'm using for this is called MailCheck, and it's used by sites like Dropbox and on. That's the one I can remember off the top of my head. Um, Khan Academy, Lyft, all these sites are using this jQuery plugin. So it's a fairly well used and supported jQuery plugin, which is why I chose it. So in order to use it, then you'll have to go to mail check and get the source code, or you can get it as a Patreon supporter. And 
you want to include, just like you normally would for any sort of jQuery plugin, you want to include jQuery first. Here I'm doing it from a CDN. And then, or you could download it and use it from your own local. I'm using a CDN here. And then you, of course, include your JavaScript file here as well. So this is our, our jQuery file that has mail check in it and minified and all that. All right. So I'm not going to go into that because into this actual file because I mean, that could take us days. But the implementation here, I'm going to, I'm going to just kind of show you, you know, you can copy this code. I'm just going to kind of show you the things to pay attention here. So we start off, of course, have our script tags. We have the way we always open any sort of jQuery with the document.ready function. Uh, this essentially makes sure that the page is loaded and JavaScript is ready for us to do our thing. And so we have full access to the DOM and all that. All right, then in terms of some of the things you can edit here, one, you have this domains object that we have here. And this is where you can set some of the different mains, domains that you can check against. So that it gives you some options to check against. So you can kind of set the ones that you want to work with here. We have top level domains, so com, net, org. Again, you could add the ones that you want to do here. So you can kind of customize this for whatever your project happens to be. So that gives you a little bit of customization there. Next, this email, so this uh, email ID here that we're targeting. This is what you can change based off of what inputs you want to target. So you can see down here, I'm targeting this input that has an ID of email. Now, again, you can change this to whatever you prefer to change it to. It could be a class, could be a different ID, etc. So whatever you want to target, you change this. Now, from there, most of the rest of this, you're going to leave in place. The only things that you might change are if you see here this is our suggestion so this is if we enter this here and let me actually show you this so if i do jj at g and i forget the i so gmail.com and i hit tab here to go to the submit button you see it says did you mean jj at gmail.com so it's giving us a suggestion of what we might have meant so you can change the text of this and you can change the ID that you're targeting here. So you can see we've created down here, we've created a paragraph tag that has an ID of suggestion, which will house all of our suggestions. So you can kind of customize this and you can target a different ID or class or whatever. You can also change the text. So here it says, did you mean, and then we use this suggestion dot full for it to be dynamic and adjust to whatever domain they happen to be trying to enter. So we can customize this here, this message, the suggestion message. This one down here is for if it's empty. So let's say for some reason the, the script doesn't have a suggestion, then what do we want it to say? So here, right now, it just says no suggestions. You could edit that to whatever you prefer here. All right, so those are some things that you can edit here. And then the last thing in here is there's just some testing checks, I would say, here. <laughs> for uh, a development. So you can see I have console.log and we're logging the suggestion right here. And then up here, we're doing two console.logs for the event and for the this. Okay, so these are just for development. If you're having, when you're developing this, if you're having issues, you can see I put little marks next to them that say remove for production, remove for production, remove for production. So you'd want to remove those. Okay, so Again, pretty easy to use. Just include the script, adjust a few of the settings here, adjust your target, and then write your HTML accordingly. Again, the biggest thing is the input has an ID. That's whatever you specified up here. In this case, it's an ID of named email. And then wherever you want your suggestions to show up, give that an ID of suggestion or, again, whatever you enter up here. All right, so that's how to do it with jQuery. Then the last one is how to do it with PHP. So you can see I have an email address that I've spec specified here, John Morris at example.com. So there's two things that you, kind of two things you may want to do. You may want to sanitize and then also validate. So sanitizing will remove any illegal characters. Validating will make sure that it's a valid email address according to the 
RCF22, I believe it is, specification, whatever that is. The specification that actually outlines what a valid email address is. This will check it according to that. Now, this is handy because it's kind of fu future, uh, future proof, excuse me. And what that means is, you know, this is when if the specification changes, you don't have to come up and back and update some regex. You could just you continue to use the same filter and this filter will be updated. So this is really probably the best way to do it because it's, uh, again, future proof. And I can say that word. <laughs> All right. So uh, using this is really pretty straightforward. Let me actually show you an example of the legal character. So greater than, less than sign here in our email address. If I refresh this, you'll see that over here, it's not actually those that less than and greater than sign aren't actually there. And that's because I've sanitized it. Now, if I comment out the sanitizing line here, and we look at this, you're going to see that they're still there. And it'll say now it'll say it's not a valid email address. Okay, so that's what the sanitization does for you. Now, you know, you probably want to be careful with that, <laughs> you know, because, um, you know, maybe if you remove something, it, it, the email address that they're trying to enter isn't going to be valid. I mean, you just want to be careful with the sanitization, so you may or may not want to use this, but you may know specifically there's a reason why you want to do this on some form, and so you can do it using that. So now you see here when we remove it, now it checks it, and it says it is a valid email address. Okay, and then the way that we do that is we use the filter var function in PHP. We pass in our email address and we pass in our filter, just like we did up here. Except this one is the sanitize filter, this is the validate filter. We check to make sure it doesn't come back false. So if it comes back false or doesn't come back false, we're echoing this is a valid email address. Otherwise, we're echoing this is not a valid email address. All right, so pretty straightforward. Again, the filter var function, pass in the email and then pass in the filter that we want to filter against. So. That's how you do it with PHP. Now, if you're looking at this, what you might have figured out is this isn't an either or proposition. As a matter of fact, you could and probably be a good idea to use all of these different checks in your forms, all of them together. Because this one's going to give some this one's the, the, the HTML one's not going to let the form submit unless it's a valid email address. The jQuery one's going to give them some immediate feedback as they're entering information and help them to try to fill it out correctly. So that's valuable. And then the PHP one is not going to let it submit to your database unless it's a valid email address. So these are all three good checks that you can use together to really strongly validate your forms. Now, you always want to be careful about going overboard, but I think in this case, we're not, the in, each individual check, we're not doing anything too crazy. All these are very, you know, reasonable checks. So why not use them all together to give yourself some strong validation on your forms? All right, so that's three different ways of validating email addresses, three different ways that you can use in conjunction to create a very, to, to, to create a solidly, <laughs> validated form for email addresses. All right, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you want to get this source code, it's available to supporting listeners of the show at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. We'd love to have you over there. Also, if you like this episode, be sure to like it so that I know you like these kind of tutorials. If you'd share it with somebody who you think could use it, I'd appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a tutorial. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later.